It's the top two rated wrestlers at AA 140 pounds. Number one ranked Eric Seibert, 45 and 1 from the South Peru, a junior against Ernest Benyon, a senior from Romeoville, one of 17 undefeated finalists at 40 and 0. Seibert's in the green, Benyon in the white over blue. Well, this is a rematch and a most interesting rematch from the semifinals of the Juliet Central sectional last weekend. That match was run by Benyon by a score of four to two, and he did it where he is so tough on the mat. He controlled the mat, the match on the mat in the second period, riding Siebert out, broke him down, and was able to get the winning takedown in the third period. We'll see if Siebert has changed his tactics a little bit since that match. No score. A minute and 22 remaining in the first period at 140 pounds. Still made his whistle. In the preseason, Seibert was ranked number two behind Terry Dantzler of Bremen. Last year, Seibert was third at 135 pounds with a record of 45 and two. And in fact, was the first sophomore to win six matches in a state tournament. He did quite a job coming all the way through the rest of the match. Particularly for a sophomore, that's quite an accomplishment. Benyon was ranked third in the preseason. Last year, he was fourth at 130 pounds. And had a record of 36 and five. Seconds remaining. Siebert still with a two nothing lead. Siebert looking for a tilt now. Siebert earlier this year beat. Widlowski of Providence, 15-6 in the finals at Springfield. That's when Widlowski was still wrestling at 140 pounds, as he did all the time before Christmas. Then he came down to 135, and he's been pretty unbeatable since then. All right, let's take a look at what happened where very quickly at Class A, 140 pounds, Matt McDonald in the blue, shooting in there again, John Lee from Monticello. Well, Siebert has changed his tactics since last week. Last week, he took the down position. As there, you saw Matt McDonald of Sterling Newman picking up the first pin of the semifinal, of the final round. At 44 seconds into the match, McDonald ranked number one, finishing the season 43 and two. Third of the preseason that justifies his number one ranking entering the final sleeve. Finishes at 34 and 3. Again, the pin for McDonald at 44 seconds. Back not a double A with a minute 41 to go in the second period. It's still 2 0 Siebert. Well, what Fedian is going to have to do is pick up the pace on the feet a little bit. And that was a nice ankle pick by Siebert. And he finishes it for the takedown. And it's now 4 to nothing. As I started to say while we were showing the pin in the Class A match, last week in their sectional match, Sieber took down in the second period and was ridden out for the entire two minutes and just wasn't the same wrestler in the third period. This time he changed his tactics. He took the neutral position. He scored another takedown, and he wants to control this match where he's best, and that's on the feet. One minute to go in the second period. Four nothing, Eric Siebert of LaSalle, Peru, a junior. And I think maybe if you see Siebert getting in trouble down there on the mat trying to ride Benyon, he's just going to let him go and go for a takedown. He remembers last week, and he remembers how Benyon beat him. 
and he wants to keep the match in a situation where he can stay in control. Sabert moved to number one in the rankings after he was selected the outstanding wrestler at the Rockford East Tournament. There's an escape and a point for Benyon. He's on the board. He trails 4-1. Benyon's going to have to do a better job of setting up his takedown shots because Sebert's a great counter wrestler. And what here is another here's another counter shot. But now Benyon finishes the double leg for a takedown. And he is to three. Now cut the margin to one with 22 seconds to go in the second period. And here Mark Seibert following in the background. And there you see him. There's Bill Wink. That's Bill Winky, the Romeo Bill coach, who's giving some instructions to Ernest Benyon. And he's telling him, two tough minutes right now, and keep your head about you. 4-3 lead for Siebert. He's lost but one time in 46 matches this year. Now Benyon will start at the bottom. Trying to break the hand control of Siebert. And he does, and the match is tied. 4-4 with a minute 43 left in the third period. Another duck under to a double leg by Benyon. He has been forcing the, the takedown action so far, and he comes out the side and gets the takedown, and it's 6-4. to four. Benyon trying to finish off a perfect season. Benyon started off down four to nothing. He'd been taken down twice. And this is where Benyon can control the match on the mat. This is double A, 140 pounds. A minute 12 to go in the final period. A 6-4 lead. Six straight points scored by Ernest Benyon. In last week's match, Siebert did not get off the bottom once. He was, every time that Benyon rode him, he rode him out for the period. It's going to be interesting to see if Siebert could get out and try to get another takedown. Fifty-five seconds left in the final period. A couple of good escape attempts there by Siebert. First he tried the switch, and then the step over. Neither of them worked. We got 50 seconds left. 6-4, Benyon. Bill Winky. With the instructions for Benyon. A caution against Benyon. False start. Benyon in the semifinals today beat Jason Grossa of Peoria Woodruff. 9-3, and it was Siebert in a technical fall over Scott Benson of Naperville Central. 18-3 was the score, and it was halted at the 5-28 mark. Well, in this match, just like he did in the section where Benyon has picked it up a notch on his feet, that's usually where Siebert has the advantage. And now that he's got the two-point lead, he's on top. He's grinding it out on the mat. It's very difficult when you're the wrestler on the bottom and behind. And sometimes it can also be difficult to be the wrestler on top and behind as well, too. Because you've got to really be able to force the action. And there's a point given. That's the second correction caution against Benyon, the second false start. One more would be a point for Siebert. You're allowed two in a match. 30 seconds left. Is a switch by Siebert, and it's a 6-6 match. That's the first time that Siebert has been able to get out of Benyon's control in either of the two matches they've wrestled. Ten seconds left, they're deadlocked at six. And there's 
has an escape. An escape, and it's 7 6 Benyon. Three seconds left. Three seconds. And that's a caution. A false start against Seabird. And they also took a second off the clock. It's all over. There it Seven, is. 6 Benyon. And a tight one is state champion double lane at 140 pounds, a 7 6 win over number one ranked Eric Siebert. And he is beside himself. Well, he came back from a 4 to nothing deficit, Benyon did. He took Siebert down twice. Siebert came back with the reversal, but. It would have been unrealistic to think that Siebert could ride him out for 22 seconds and Benyon got the escape that won it for him. And look how happy he is. Benyon, who is the outstanding wrestler at the Stag Invitational and at Homeward Crossmore, caps off the year with the state title in double-A at 140 pounds. Take a look at that escape, which was the winning margin because it was tied at six. Here, Siebert, uh, Benyon still trying to get out. Hasn't done it yet. Siebert still with the hands locked around the back. Trying to trip Benyon back to his back. But Benyon able to apply pressure against that shoulder. Broke the hand control and got the escape with five seconds left.